हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल इंजीनियरिंग मैथमेटिक्स डीजे गणित फ्रॉम दिस लेक्चर ऑनवर्ड्स वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस हाइपोथेसिस टेस्टिंग और वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस डिफरेंट टेस्ट फॉर हाइपोथेसिस बिफोर गोइंग फॉर दिस लेक्चर इफ यू हैव नॉट सीन लेक्चर्स रिलेटेड टू सैम्पलिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड एस्टिमेशन देन आई सजेस्ट यू टू वॉच दोज लेक्चर्स फर्स्ट बिफोर गोइंग फॉर हाइपोथेसिस टेस्टिंग because in hypothetical testing we are going to use all those uh, terminologies which we have understood in sampling distributions and in estimation theory and as we know that area of statistical inference can be divided into two different areas one is estimation and another is hypothesis testing so we have discussed about estimation uh, theory and uh, from this lecture onwards we are going to discuss about hypothesis testing in estimation theory we are uh, considering a random sample from a given population and we uh, check that how closely our sample statistic is to the population parameter for example uh, we have discussed that suppose population mean is denoted by mu and suppose we are drawing a sample and we are uh, calculating sample mean x bar then we have seen that how to estimate population parameter um, mu using sample mean x bar in hypothesis testing we are not doing uh, this type of estimation of population parameter instead of that Uh, we claim that suppose population parameter has some value say mu 0 uh, that is our claim and uh, we test whether the claim is correct or not so instead of estimating population parameters which we are doing in estimation area in hypothesis testing we are making certain statements about the population parameters that is we claim some uh, some quantity for population parameter and then we test whether that claim is true or not or in other words we first make a hypothesis about the population parameter and then we test that hypothesis using different statistical methods so that we are going to discuss in this uh, lecture there are many problems in which rather than estimating the value of a parameter we must decide whether a statement concerning a parameter is true or false that is we must test a hypothesis about a parameter a hypothesis about the value of a population parameter is an assertion about its value there are two types of hypothesis one is null hypothesis another is alternative hypothesis null hypothesis is the statement about the population parameter that is assumed to be true unless there is convincing evidence to the contrary it is denoted by h suffix 0 0 for null so null hypothesis will be denoted by h suffix 0 or we will read this as h not null hypothesis is the statement about the population parameter so null hypothesis is uh, uh, based on some uh, past experimental data or it is based on the history of the research based in earlier days alternative hypothesis is the statement about the population parameter that is contradictory to the null hypothesis it is denoted by h suffix a so alternative hypothesis and null hypothesis are contradictory statements to each other null hypothesis is uh, something that we claim that 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 statement is true and alternative hypothesis is the claim that that null hypothesis is not true so alternative hypothesis is a statement which is always a contradictory statement to the null hypothesis now we will see in detail 
these uh, two types of hypothesis when we move for examples hypothesis testing is a statistical procedure in which a choice is made between a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis based on information in a sample so what we are doing in hypothesis testing is based on some past experience uh, we make some claim that is we uh, construct a null hypothesis and after that uh, we are drawing a sample from the population and based on the data obtained from sample uh, we try to check whether the claim or whether the null hypothesis is acceptable or not acceptable so for that we are doing some procedure and that is known as hypothesis testing the end result of a hypothesis testing procedure is a choice of one of the following two possible conclusions either reject null hypothesis or fail to reject null hypothesis if we are rejecting null hypothesis that means we are accepting alternative hypothesis if we fail to reject null hypothesis that means uh, we fail to accept alternative hypothesis in this uh, hypothesis testing procedure uh, we never say that null hypothesis is always holding or it is always true instead of that we will use this type of statements uh, we reject null hypothesis or we fail to reject null hypothesis and this is the systematic hypothesis testing procedure this we will uh, understand with the help of one example after reading this this uh, procedure is known as critical value approach so first step is identify the null and alternative hypothesis related to the given problem after that identify the relevant test statistic and its distribution in the next step compute from the data the value of test statistic after that construct the rejection region that we are going to discuss in few seconds and after that compare the value computed in step 3 this value we will obtain uh, using the information from the given sample so compare the value computed in step 3 to the rejection region constructed in step 4 and make a decision further formulate the decision in the context of the problem if applicable so there are different uh, parameters which we are going to uh, test in the topic of hypothesis testing first parameter we are going to test is population mean and uh, during the whole procedure uh, we will be given the claim related to population mean and we will check whether that claim is to be rejected or it is not to be rejected now for that uh, we will be given some sample of some size and uh, we will be given the population standard deviation in some cases it may be unknown also as we have discussed in sampling and estimation theory so to uh, decide the claim uh, to check whether the claim related to population mean holds or not or to check whether the hypothesis related to population mean is to be rejected or is not to be rejected Uh, we will be given a sample for that sample we will be given a sample mean and using that sample mean uh, we will try to find out sample statistic and uh, using that information from that sampling distribution uh, we will uh, see whether we can reject the null hypothesis or we can we cannot reject the null hypothesis so all these things are tedious to talk about but once we do one example uh, we can easily understand this process so first uh, uh, procedure hypothesis testing which i am uh, starting now uh, 
is large sample hypothesis test for a population mean so we are going to discuss hypothesis testing for the population parameter which is population mean and we assume that samples which we are drawing from a given population are large samples that is n is greater than or equal to 30 and we will be doing problems of large samples sometimes population standard deviation will be known to us sometimes population standard deviation will be unknown to us so in that cases if sample or standard deviation is given then we can replace sigma by sample standard deviation if n is greater than or equal to 30 and of course we will be given the level of significance if you recall uh, we have discussed in estimation theory that uh, we are given the confidence level 1 minus alpha so if confidence level is 1 minus alpha then alpha is known as significance level or level of significance so the most common values of alpha are 5 percent and 1 percent that is 0 0.05 and 0 0.01 these are the most common values of significance level but you have to use significance level which is given in the problem which you are doing so with this in mind uh, we can understand the hypothesis testing procedure for population mean using this example so suppose we want to establish that the thermal conductivity of a certain kind of cement brick differs from 0.34 the value claimed we will test on the basis of n equal to 35 determinations and at the 0.05 level of significance from information gathered in similar studies we can expect that the variability of such determinations is given by sigma equal to 0.01 suppose that the mean of the 35 determinations is 0.34 so in this problem first we have to decide the null and alternative hypothesis null hypothesis is the statement uh, which is about the population parameter or we can say that the claim about the given population parameter will be considered as null hypothesis so here you can see that the claim is 0.34 claim is that the thermal conductivity of a certain kind of cement brick so here it is given that 0.34 is the value for this thermal conductivity which is claimed here they have written that uh, we want to establish that the thermal conductivity differs from 0.34 the value which is claimed so 0.34 is the value for population mean so first uh, thing which you have to understand that the claim related to the population parameter will be considered as null hypothesis so first step is to construct null and alternative hypothesis so first we write down step one so uh, let null hypothesis which is denoted by h suffix zero is population mean which is equal to 0.34 and uh, this generally we denote by mu zero mu suffix zero so 0.34 is the value which we will denote by mu zero alternative hypothesis is the statement which is contradictory to this statement here it is given that suppose we want to establish that the thermal conductivity of a certain kind of cement brick differs from 0.34 differs from 0.34 means it can be less than 0.34 or it can be greater than 0.34 so here we will say that alternative hypothesis is mu is different from 0.34 so 
so here we write that and h suffix a that is alternative hypothesis is mu is not equal to 0.34 now here i think they have forgot to write down average thermal conductivity because we are considering population mean so we must write average thermal conductivity of a brick so once we establish uh, what is null and alternative hypothesis uh, we should check what is the given level of significance so given that alpha is 0 0.05 given that level of significance is alpha equal to 0 0.05 so this is the first step in this procedure identify the null and alternative hypothesis second step is identify the relevant test statistic and its distribution so how to identify relevant test statistic that is step number two so for that we first decide uh, what is sample size so we can write given that so here it is given that from information gathered in similar studies uh, we can expect that the variability of such determinations is given by sigma equal to 0 0.01 this is population standard deviation and uh, we will test on the basis of n equal to 35 determinations so sample size is 35 and uh, here it is written that suppose that the mean of 35 determinations is 0.343 so this is sample mean x bar and this is sample size 35 so given that n equal to 35 and sample mean x bar is 0.343 so here sample size is 35 which is greater than 30 so we can say that therefore uh, we have a large sample we have discussed that a sample is considered as large sample if its uh, sample size is at least 30 or 30 or more so now we uh, we have discussed in central limit theorem that if we are drawing a random sample of large size then the sampling distribution of that sampling procedure that is x bar is normally distributed so we know that z equal to x bar minus mu divided by sigma over under root n is a standard normal random variable so this is the test statistic for our problem so you can see in step 2 i have written that identify the relevant test statistic and its distribution so this will depend on the sample size also it will depend on the population standard deviation is given or it is not given so here population standard deviation is given it is sigma equal to 0.01 so population standard deviation is known to us sample size is large therefore we know that z given by this formula is a standard normal random variable so we will use this test statistic for our hypothesis testing problem so this is the step number two now in step number three compute from the data the value of test statistic so now in step number three uh, we will substitute values of variables of sample so step number three we substitute all these values mu is mu zero that is 0.34 and uh, n equal to 35 sigma is 0 0.01 so now we find out value of test statistic x bar is 0.343 minus 
mu that is mu zero is 0.34 divided by population standard deviation which is 0.01 divided by square root of sample size which is 35 so using scientific calculator we obtain that this test statistic has value 1.77 up to two decimal places so this is the completion of step number three compute from the data the value of test statistics now next step is construct the rejection region so how to construct the rejection region or what is rejection region that we understand now that is step number four now we know that this z is a standard normal random variable so we know that shape of normal distribution is bell shape distribution now to determine the rejection region uh, we have to use the level of significance which is given and because this is a standard normal random variable value of z at the center is zero now level of significance is alpha equal to 0 0.05 and here our alternative hypothesis is mu is different from 0.34 so either mu can be less than 0.34 or mu can be greater than 0.34 so whenever we have this type of alternative hypothesis it is known as two-tailed statement or we can say that this hypothesis testing is test which is known as two-tailed test suppose we have this type of alternative hypothesis mu is less than 0.34 then this type of hypothesis is known as one-tailed test you can have mu greater than 0.34 also so suppose you have this type of alternative hypothesis or this type of alternative hypothesis we will call that hypothesis testing as one tailed test and if we have inequality then we will call it as two tailed test so here we are having two tailed hypothesis testing because we have mu is different from 0.34 so whenever we have two tailed test we will divide our level of significance alpha by 2 so here alpha is 0 0.05 if i divide this by 2 i will obtain 0 0.025 so suppose alpha by 2 is somewhere here because this is symmetric curve then suppose this value of z is corresponding to z alpha by 2 then this will be minus z suffix alpha by 2 and area in this tail will be alpha by 2 we have discussed all these things in earlier lectures so area in two tails will be equal to 0 0.025 now what is rejection region so first we will decide what is value of z suffix alpha by 2 for that we can use standard normal probability table so first we decide what is z alpha by 2 and uh, in some problems you will be given the value of z alpha by 2 for example they can specify in the question that z suffix 0 0.025 is this one then you can directly use that given value but suppose we are not given value of z suffix alpha by 2 which is z suffix 0 0.025 then we have discussed in the lectures of estimation that how to obtain this value so we know that probability that z is taking value z alpha by 2 is equal to alpha by 2 therefore probability that z is bigger than here alpha by 2 is 0 0.025 this is equal to 0 0.025 so therefore probability that z is less than or equal to z suffix 0 
will be equal to 1 minus this probability which is 0 0.025 and if I subtract this from 1 I will obtain 0.975 so now I will use cumulative probability table and I will find out this area in that table and the value of z corresponding to this area will be value of z suffix 0 0.025 so now I consider this probability table and uh, here we have this type of probabilities probability that capital Z is less than or equal to z and we are interested in the value of z which we have denoted by z suffix 0 0.025 such that we obtain 0.975 so we have to search for this area in this table actually all these values in the table are areas or probabilities of this type probability that z is less than or equal to z so now we search for 0.975 in this table here you can see i have 0.9713 and if i search in this line i obtain 0.975 here so this corresponds to 1.9 and the column this column corresponds to 0 0.06 so the value of z will be this 1.9 plus 0 0.06 that is equal to 1.96 the value of z for which this probability is 0.975 is 1.96 so we obtain that z suffix 0 0.025 is equal to 1.96 so therefore here we write that z suffix 0 0.025 is 1.96 and uh, therefore here this value is 1.96 now we can replace this by 1.96 and minus 1.96 so these two values are known as critical values of z z 0 0.025 is 1.96 and minus z suffix 0 0.025 is minus 1.96 so these two values which we obtain are known as critical values of this z so and the region which is shaded by red lines is known as rejection region or we can say that it is critical region so if our test statistic which we have calculated is greater than 1.96 whatever test statistic we have calculated suppose capital Z is greater than 1.96 that is we are in this side or we are in this region or if value of Z is less than minus 1.96 that is we are in this region then we reject the null hypothesis and if value of test statistic which we have obtained is in between these two minus 1.96 and 1.96 then we do not reject the null hypothesis here we will consider equality if z is greater than or equal to 1.96 or if z is less than or equal to minus 1.96 then we reject the null hypothesis otherwise null hypothesis cannot be reached okay fine so here we have obtained that z suffix 0 0.025 is 1.96 so this completes step number four construct the rejection region so our rejection region is the region which is to the right side of 1.96 and region to the left side of minus 1.96 so if our test statistic which we have calculated using sample data is in this region then we 
reject the null hypothesis otherwise we fail to reject the null hypothesis next step is compare the value computed in step 3 that is whatever z value we have calculated using sample data so we have to compare that value which we have calculated in step 3 to the rejection region constructed in step 4 and make a decision so the value of z statistic which we have obtained in step 3 is 1.77 and we can see 1.77 will be somewhere here so it is not in the rejection region it is in between minus 1.96 and 1.96 so we can say that null hypothesis cannot be rejected so step 5 is the decision step so we can see that since z equal to 1.77 falls between it is in between minus 1.96 and 1.96 we can say that the null hypothesis cannot be rejected we will never say that null hypothesis holds okay we will write in this way either uh, we fail to reject null hypothesis or we reject the null hypothesis so here we fail to reject the null hypothesis or the null hypothesis cannot be rejected because the value of z statistic is not in the rejection region it is outside the rejection region that is it is in between these two critical values of z and we will remember these two values of z are known as critical values of z statistic these regions are called critical regions or we can say that rejection regions so this is very simple procedure you have to remember these simple steps first step is you have to uh, write down appropriate null and alternative hypothesis you have to check what is the level of significance given in the problem in this step 2 you have to determine that which state statistic you will apply and what will be the appropriate distribution for that that test statistic here we have used this z as a test statistic and we know that this z is a standard normal random variable in the next step we will calculate value of test statistic using given sample data sometimes sigma will be known to us if sigma is unknown and we have large sample then we can replace sigma by sample standard deviation so using that information we decide the value of test statistic whatever test statistic we are using after that we decide the rejection region for that we will use level of significance we will decide critical values of z using the appropriate probability table sometimes you will be given these values if values are given then it is fine if values are not given then we can use this logic to decide the critical values of z so from critical values of z we can decide the rejection regions here we can say that if value of z is greater than 1.96 or if value of z is less than minus 1.96 then we reject the null hypothesis otherwise null hypothesis cannot be rejected so these two uh, areas are the rejection regions and then last step is decision step once you determine what is the rejection region then you check whatever value you have calculated that value is in the rejection region or it is not in the rejection region if the value calculated is in the rejection region then we can say that we reject null hypothesis and if value calculated in this step is not in the rejection region then we can say that null hypothesis cannot be rejected 
so this is all about this hypothesis testing one more thing i have to uh, say is here we have used two tailed hypothesis test so whenever your alternative hypothesis is in this form that mu is not equal to mu zero some hypothesized value then we will use two tailed test now in some problems your hypothesis will be either in this form or in this form so this type of hypothesis if there is a hypothesis of this type alternative hypothesis then we can say that that hypothesis test is one tailed test now if we have two tailed test then we will have two critical values of z statistic here as we have seen uh, we have seen that we have area this in two tails is alpha by 2 and we have two critical values of z so our rejection region is divided into two different regions in two tails but if we have one tail test our rejection region will be on uh, either on this side or on the left side so we will keep in mind that if our alternative hypothesis is either less than type or greater than type then rejection region will be uh, rejection region will be of this type that is it is area in a single tail or in a one tail therefore it is known as one tail test but if we have an alternative hypothesis of this type not equal to type then rejection region will be area which is divided into two tails so this is all about this session i hope you have understood how to check or how to uh, use this hypothesis testing for large samples and for particularly population mean which is population parameter so in upcoming lectures we will discuss some more problems of this type thank you